friends welcome back to your upsc today we are going to start with another topic that is von thunen theory of agricultural location so let's get started so starting with von thunen theory of agricultural location see von thunen that is johann hendrik von thunen he was not a geographer okay he was a german economist okay and in his book that is isolated state that was published in 1826 okay so in this book he gave this theory of agricultural location okay so this book was published in 1826 and in this book the theory of agricultural location was published okay now like every modules that we have studied earlier this model is also having certain basic assumptions to make this theory more clear and lucid okay so these assumptions are first is as the name suggested by book okay this estate this whole estate will be isolated that is it will not be linked with the outer world via any trade okay and it, no, there will be no trade linkages amongst the other world and the area that we are studying okay so it is a isolated state okay it is a closed state with no contact with other world okay or trade linkages now after that the whole area will be isotropic that is it will be a uniform plane and Uh, that means their resources everything will be distributed uniformly throughout the area now the next assumption was that transportation surface is uniform okay transport surface that is road and all this uniform and the only medium for traveling or transport medium is horse cart okay see during this time we had no automobiles okay so these bullock carts horse carts they were used as a medium for traveling now von thunen he considered only horse cart as a medium for transportation both for passenger as well as the goods and services that is for the product so for passenger and product this horse cart was used for traveling okay now the fare was equal okay and it varied only with the distance so like for 1 km we have 1 rupees okay so there was no difference in fare on the basis of weight and other things okay so for 1 km whether you take your goods whether you take a person okay anything it will take One rupees. Okay, for two kilometer it will take two rupees. So the wage, uh, sorry, the fare it varies only with the distance covered, not with any other thing. Okay. Now next is all non-agricultural products were supplied by a single central city market. Okay. See, there was a city market at the center. now every non agricultural product okay so everything was provided by this central city market okay central city market it was a main market of this whole area and here all the non agricultural product now all the non agricultural product except for this central city area were not at all sold in any other area okay or any other part of this area then another thing that this author resumed was that the population was distributed uniformly okay so in this whole area the population distribution was uniform like if we have 100 people per kilometer per square kilometer then we will have 100 people per square kilometer in every area okay 
Now after this, Von Thunen assumed that all the farmers they were engaged in commercial enterprises and produ produced for the market supply. Okay, so for market supply, these all the farmers they were engaged in commercial enterprises. That means they are growing crop for market for selling in market. Okay, not for sustenance purpose. Next is the people were rational maximizers of profit in their enterprise. Okay, so whether it be farmer, whether it be retailer, wholesaler, anyone, they were rational maximizers of profit. Okay, so in whatever field they are working, they will work for their profit maximization. And see, all the farmers they are willing to occupy the land that is close to the city as possible that is as close to the city as possible okay so see like if we take any capital city now in this capital city we have to pay very high wages for for giving the rent for housing okay so now people they will try to occupy the area that is surrounding the city okay so according to their feasibility they will try to occupy the area okay so now the surrounding city will be having a little bit lesser rent but as compared to the more outer rim it will be having higher rent okay so the people who are capable of paying the rent in this closer concentric circle they will stay here while the others who are not capable they will move to the outer rim okay so now here also the people they were trying to occupy the land as close to the city as possible okay so they wanted to be close to the city so that they have easy access to the central market okay but there comes the problem of feasibility so as much feasible it could be they tried to occupy that land okay so these are some of the assumptions now now after assumptions we will look into the basic objective of this whole model see like we have studied earlier we had various industrial model industrial location model okay so now everyone was concentrating on these industrial location but agriculture is also a very important part of our economy okay and during that time agriculture was much stronger than like it was as strong as industrial industries if we compare it to if we if we compare it to industries at that time okay now so everyone was looking into industrial location but we also need some normative laws that can govern the agricultural production in any area okay so this model what it did was it tried to provide the location theory for commercial enterprises okay so for agriculture where the agricultural farm should be located okay and which farm should be grown oh, sorry which crop should be grown in which farm according to the land area and its accessibility to the market everything was decided or everything was given in this model okay so this model it tried it actually tried to govern the agricultural production in any area okay so how can we like how can we or which crop should be produced in which area that was decided or that was given provided in this model now after doing all the experiments everything the results came okay so in the results various results or various conclusion we can say they were drawn and according to these results the model was formed okay so this results are first is see the land use zones they are arranged on the terms of variety of farm products okay 
so we have variety of farm products like we have high value product okay we have low value gross product we have high value gross product we have high value pure products okay so likewise we have many products okay now with reference to the market city they were arranged in a form of concentric circles okay so as we have studied this is the market city central market city and these these arrangement they were trying to be as close to the city as possible now on the basis of variety of farm products they decided or they arranged themselves okay so now this arrangement it took the shape of concentric circle that concentric around the city okay so this is how the arrangement that was given by von thunen it looked like okay it was like a concentric circle now if we look at the arrangement how this arrangement was done it would be more clear if you look into the diagram so this is the distribution pattern of von thunen model first of all let's just forget about this one we will just uh, concentrate on this diagram for understanding the arrangement of the sorry the arrangement pattern of the variety of farm products okay so first of all this is our capital city okay the main market for non agricultural products okay so it is the main market for non agricultural products now after that we have this first concentric circle now this first concentric circle this one as we know this is the closest to the city okay so now the wages here or sorry the rent for the land will be very high so the product that we are growing here should be of such a value that it can make the rent feasible okay so the product will be high valued product okay so now high valued product if we have high valued product it can be arranged anywhere because the distance the cost of the uh, transportation can be equated by this one by this product or by the price or the by the cost of this product we can easily equate the transportation cost okay or we can easily overcome the transportation cost okay so now why this high valued product is located here because this product is perishable okay so all the high valued perishable products are located in this area okay now the high valued perishable products are like we have milk products okay milk is very it takes very less time to get spoiled okay so it is very perishable now after that we have vegetables then we have fruits so these were these were the products that were concentrated or that were located or that were produced in this area okay now this area we can say it is for dairy and for horticulture after that we have the second concentric circle now in the second concentric circle we have forestry okay we practiced forestry or we can say silviculture now why forestry was practiced here because as we all know from forest we get firewood okay now there must be question that firewood is not as high valued as this one so they will not be able to pay rent for this area okay but you see that firewood it is used on the daily basis or it was used on the daily basis by the people at that time because there was no lpg and other things for cooking purpose also and for burning fuels okay so for burning only firewood was firewood was available okay so for cooking in the kitchen and warming purpose 
this fire word was used for or was used in daily basis okay so in daily basis if we use fire word see if we locate this because it is having very low value if we locate it in the outer rims okay then what will happen the transportation cost okay the transportation cost will not be able uh, uh, sorry the sorry the profit that is earned by the forestry or the firewood will not be able to equate the transportation cost okay so the transportation cost will be more than the profit that is earned by forestry okay so the firewood will become very costly okay and firewood is used for uh, used on the daily basis okay so for that this firewood is located for this purpose this firewood is located and the nearby areas okay so that the transportation cost can equate the profit earned by firewood okay or the profit earned by firewood can easily pay the transportation cost okay so for this purpose firewood which is a low valued bulky product is located in this area okay now after this we have high valued bulky product that are located here okay so high valued bulky products like we have potatoes okay so now potatoes we have high valued bulky products see their production per hectare per hectare production is quite high okay but the value of the product is not so much that they can pay the rent of the nearby area okay so because the value of the product even though the production is higher the value of product is not so much that they can pay the rent of the closer area that is why they are located in this outer rim okay now after that we have cereals okay so now as we can see these three types of cereals they can be grown first one is Oops, just a second first one is arable with fallow land long fallow then we have three field arable land and the other one is ranching okay so now here we will locate our crops cereals etc will be grown here okay now why cereals will be grown here see cereals as we know they are having high value and they are non perishable okay now because they are having high value they will be the profit that is earned by these crops by selling these crops will be able to pay back the transportation cost that ca that's why we can handle the transportation cost that will be incurred by transporting these cereals from this and this area to the main city market okay now these two that is arable fell long arable with long fellow and three field arable land they are actually the agricultural practices that are practiced in european countries okay so for having high produce they practice various type of agriculture practices so that is why von thunen had has distributed this land into two parts now the last one that we can see is ranching so now this last area is ranching now see in ranching we actually rear our cattle and livestock for meat for wool for eggs etc okay so this is our fifth one we have fourth one that is crop production i value non 
non perishable now at last we have meat wool and egg by ranching okay now see ranching is having very high value okay so this ranching will be able to pay the cost transportation cost that will be incurred by the by traveling the long distances okay so for ranching purpose we selected or we can say one thin in selected this outermost area so this was the initial model or we can say the initial distribution pattern that was given by von thinen in his model for agricultural location now what happened see von thinen was a very practical man okay so he knew that there are some exceptions like we will have a river that may pass from this area okay so there was a concept for a navigable river that was available in the model so this model was flexible to any changes okay so there was a structure that was given or there was a model that was given by von thinen in which we have two things that were different from the initial model okay so first one was having this navigable river and second thing there is another small city that evolved within this area okay so this small city has a production jo zone of its own okay so this capital city there is a capital city and there is a small city this is a small city having production zone of its own and it is a sort of independent city okay so this area here is depicting the small city okay now here we have the navigable river okay so this is our navigable river now how this navigable river has changed the distribution pattern now they are not in the form of concentric circle while they are along the rivers see this river because we have this navigable river we can use this navigable river for water transportation okay and water transportation is least is having least rent okay we can say water transportation is the cheapest mode of transportation so von thinen considered this mode of transportation okay and the agricultural practices were now on the margin or on the basis of this river flow okay so now here we have dairy production then here we have forestry after that we have this low value products that is potatoes and all then we have high values non perishable product that is we have cereals and all and lastly we have ranching practice going on in the outermost area okay so this is how the uh, pattern distribution pattern of the variety of products food products they changed because of this navigable river and this small city that appeared in this area okay so this is the whole distribution pattern now after the distribution pattern we can say we can see as shown in the diagram okay now after this we will talk about the land use intensity pattern see this is our capital city and the area nearest to this capital city will have to pay the highest rent okay so they will have to have more money with them okay so now for more money they have to be engaged in the high land use intensity okay so the most intensive agricultural practices they were in the closer area and as we go out 
the intensity of agricultural production it decreased okay so the land was used or land use intensity pattern was on the basis of proximity or we can say the distance from the central market okay so this was the whole concept of onthenin now ajerden ajerden he actually tried to modify this theory because he discovered certain problems with this concept okay so the concept conceptual framework it lacked in some of the concepts okay that were discovered by ajerden okay so he actually tried to derive some formulas so that this problem can be resolved okay so he put some calculations in the thenanian model now according to him the locational rent the locational rent on a land is the difference between the total revenue that is obtained from the land use okay and the total cost per unit of land okay so the locational rent will be calculated according to the total revenue that we have and the total cost of per unit land okay that will give us the locational rent now the total revenue that was obtained as a product of land yield per unit so here we will look into yield per unit and the prevalent market obtained from the product like how much market this this product is obtaining okay so on these two things that is land yield product of land is land yield per unit and prevalent market obtained from the product that will give us total revenue now total cost was incurred from the yield per unit of land use and per unit production cost okay so the production cost like anything agricultural uh, sorry irrigation fertilizer fertilizers that were used manures etc everything whatever cost it was having subtracting the delivery cost okay so all these cost were included in the total cost incurred okay so he derived the formula that is lr that is locational rent will be equal to e p minus a minus efk okay now here e is yield of product per unit of land okay so now this yield can be measured in weight or it can be measured in bushels okay then p is the market price per unit production of the product okay so what is the market price of the per unit product like what is the market price of 1 kg of sugar okay next is a a is production cost per unit per for each unit okay so production cost per unit will be represented by a lastly we have f that is freight rate per unit distance okay so it can be considered in miles or any distance like kilometers etc so freight rate per unit distance was given by f okay so by using this formula von uh, sorry edger dunes he said that the area in which the von thunen model was lacking that can that that problem can be overcome overcome by this formula or by using this calculation so this was a modification in the theory of von thunen now after this model we will look into some applications of the von thunen model now see this model was used by several authors for visualizing the 
practices or we can say subsistence and commercial farming it was used for both subsistence and commercial farming okay and it was used for visualizing the distribution pattern of agricultural produce according to this model okay next is von thunenian model can be observed in general in generalized pattern within the national framework also at different school scales from meso level to micro level to even village or town level okay so this von thunenian model it was very flexible and that is why it can be used for national framework it can be used for meso at meso level okay at micro level or we can use it even for a village or a town level okay now what were the major critiques of this model first is this thunenian model it was irrelevant for modern complex farming system okay so many critiques they posed that this thunenian model it was not suitable for modern farming practices and the another critique was the assumptions they had various limitations okay like all the farmers they are not uh, working for profit maximization okay most of the farmers like if we say the case of india most of the farmers they are working for sustenance purpose okay so he said that all the farmers they are working as a entrepreneur and their sole motive is profit maximization so that was not at all correct okay so there were certain limitations in his assumptions at last we can see that this thunenian model was distorted because of various exceptions see he used various assumptions for forming this model now in real life we don't have such type of place which have uniform resource distribution and population is distributed equally okay and transportation cost is equal so because this these assumptions were distorted okay that is why this whole concept it did not worked as accepted expected sorry okay so this was the main critique of this model okay so this was all about the von thunenian model so that was all for today guys i hope you enjoyed today's lecture let's meet in our next class till then take care and have a nice day